The Biden administration is getting ready to make more concessions to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky by allowing him to use almost any U.S. weapons for strikes, including inside Russia, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said. Commenting on a recent remark by Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh, who confirmed that the Kiev regime had been allowed to use U.S. weapons in its terrorist incursion in the Kursk region, the Russian diplomat noted that the U.S. establishment has thrown common sense out of the window, believing that they can do whatever they want. Ukraine has been given full carte blanche for operations in Russian regions. Moreover, the Joe Biden administration is obviously getting ready for more concessions to Zelensky in giving him free reign to use almost any U.S. weapons, including for strikes inside Russia. Zakharova maintained, describing the U.S. policies as increasingly pursuing escalation, being driven by ambitions of world domination. Washington has been intensifying tensions with Russia as it seeks to inflict a strategic defeat on our country and it is not looking to avoid escalation, despite statements by a number of high-profile U.S. officials. She lamented, Ukraine's daring ground offensive has taken the fight to Russia, but not nearly as much as its leaders would like because, they say, the United States won't let them. The U.S. restricts the use of long-range ballistic missiles it provides to Ukraine, which wants to aim them at military targets inside Russia. Ukraine's offensive, along with a barrage of drones and missiles that Moscow launched this week, has intensified pressure on the Biden administration to ease its cautious approach to the use of Western weapons in escalating Ukrainian attacks. The Biden administration says its careful deliberations, including which advanced weapons it supplies to Ukraine and when, are necessary to avoid provoking retaliation from Russian President Vladimir Putin. Some analysts agree Putin would take a Ukrainian strike by an American long-range ballistic missile as an attack by the US itself. But other American and European supporters of Ukraine say the White House should see that Putin's threats of attacking the West, including with nuclear weapons, are bluster. Their fear is the US support that has allowed Ukraine to withstand Russia's 2022 invasion comes with delays and caveats that could ultimately contribute to its defeat. The operation of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region of Russia has significantly changed the dynamics of the war in Ukraine. It has undermined morale among the Russian military, according to The Hill. According to the agency, given the short-term nature of previous operations, many were quick to dismiss the Ukrainian Armed Forces' maneuver as a foolhardy late-summer adventure. However, as the campaign unfolds, it is becoming increasingly clear that Commander-in-Chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Alexander Sirsky, has opened a new front, catching Russian forces off guard. The impact of the operation in the Kursk region is felt far beyond the battlefield, as it points to disarray inside the Kremlin. Now the focus of Russian command has shifted from Ukraine to maintaining an increasingly fragile grip on power. According to The Hill, Ukraine's success has undermined the morale among Russian troops. Russia also needs more forces if it wants to reclaim its territories. However, this cannot be achieved unless Russia withdraws its position in Ukraine or sends young conscripts to the Kursk region. But sending them to war is politically challenging in light of the previous promise made by Russian President Vladimir Putin not to send them to Ukraine. President Vladimir Putin wants so firmly in control, appears dazed, wandering aimlessly through the dull meetings he once presided over with menace and authority. Gone are the threats of nuclear escalation, the shirtless summer holidays in Siberia and the bizarre anti-Western outbursts. The character transformation may reflect the cumulative psychological effects of losing a long and pointless war, but it also revives persistent rumors that the man on camera is not the president at all, the newspaper notes. Meanwhile, war-related labor shortages in the civilian economy will certainly worsen as the conflict and its demand for soldiers expands, driving up wages and prices. Economic hardship, a deeper Ukrainian invasion, or another attempt at large-scale mobilization could send Russians back to the streets. There are already signs of unrest in Russia's ethnic minority regions. Violent dissent is sure to grow, given the disproportionate number of non-Slavic minorities who are dying in suicide attacks on Ukrainian trenches and artillery fire at the front.